AMP keeps you in the fast lane by not allowing you to shoot yourself in the foot. So what's different in AMP? Let's have a look. Each AMP page consists of a special flavor of HTML we call AMP HTML and a bunch of CSS. The limitations for both can be roughly divided into two categories. Code you must have in your page and code that is disallowed. Let's start with the must-haves. First, the basic structure of an HTML page. Each AMP page needs a modern doc type of doc type HTML, contain the lightning bolt or AMP attribute in the HTML tag, be formatted in UTF-8 and include its char set. Even more crucial, the head of that page needs to include the AMP library script, a decent meta viewport to correctly display on mobile, and a canonical link to itself or a non-AMP version of the same page. The head of the page finally needs what we call the AMP boilerplate. The boilerplate is a bunch of CSS that AMP uses to prevent the infamous flash of unstyled content. So why is that? Well, AMP components like AMP carousel need to be initialized in JavaScript, so they'd look ugly for a brief second without that block of CSS. But what if AMP.js fails to load? Well, that's the reason we're using a CSS animation. After 8 seconds, the CSS will simply display the body, regardless of whether the library has loaded. Now that's actually everything that an AMP page can't live without. So what are the forbidden fruit? First, no JavaScript. The biggest limitation is the fact that you're not allowed to load or embed any JavaScript that isn't coming from AMP itself. Sounds like a great limitation, and it is. But the good news is that AMP ships with hundreds of high-level web components that enable interactivity, like AMP Carousel, AMP Sidebar, and so on. If you need one-way data binding on a state machine, take a look at AMP Bind, which allows you to do stuff like interactive product pages that update availability of your selection in real time. Next, no external CSS. AMP doesn't allow you to include CSS from external sources, for example as link in the head of your page. And you can't use inline CSS within the style attribute of elements. All of your CSS must be inlined within a single style AMP custom tag and fit within a 50 kilobyte limit. That's to ensure no additional round trips are necessary to lay out your content and that you're not reusing a giant global CSS file on all of your AMP pages. The one exception for the link rule are custom fonts, from whitelisted providers like fonts.com or Google Fonts. They also luckily don't count towards the 50k limit. Disallowed CSS. Staying on the topic of CSS, there are a few things you mustn't use. Most notably, the important modifier, the filter property, and some more exotic ones like behavior and moss binding. Animations are fine, but the only properties you're allowed to animate are transform and opacity, as these are the only ones that are GPU accelerated. If you're now thinking, wait, that doesn't sound so bad, then you're absolutely right. The rumors of AMP styling capabilities being severely limited are greatly exaggerated. Now, coming to disallowed HTML. When it comes to HTML, most common HTML tags are allowed, with a notable exception of image, video, audio, and iframe. We also don't allow stuff that will generally make one's life miserable, like frame, frame set, base, object, embed, and applet. But if you're now thinking that AMP sounds pretty bleak without images, video, and so on, worry not. These tags all have AMP equivalents, namely AMP image, AMP video, AMP audio, and AMP iframe. They mainly exist so AMP can prioritize the load of important content over anything else. Finally, what about forms? Forms are an edge case. They're generally allowed, but require the inclusion of the AMP form extension script, plus come with some, some additional limitations. Using the post method requires specifying an AJAX endpoint, and certain input types like file or password are forbidden. To learn more about forms in AMP, head to the AMP form reference page on ampproject.org, linked in the video description. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is standard HTML and CSS, and contrary to popular belief, you're not limited to building for mobile either. The best way to check whether you followed the rules is to validate your AMP pages. Find out how to do just that and much more in the description, and ask me any questions on Twitter at AmpHTML or in the comments below. Onwards.